In this video, we'll show you how to configure FCNVME for Hitachi VSP storage with Red Hat Enterprise Linux. We'll be using a Hitachi VSP 5000 series storage system, but the process is the same for other VSP storage systems. We're using a simple setup with one host, a dual port host bus adapter, or HBA, two FCNVME supported switches, and one Hitachi 5000 series storage system. The configuration requires the following FCNVME supported components. A server running Red Hat Enterprise Linux. A dual port HBA. Two switches. A Hitachi VSP 5000 storage system. A management host for command control interface, or CCI. You can also install CCI on the Red Hat Linux host. The first step is to set up the host. For the purposes of this video, we assume that you've already configured zoning between the HBA ports and the storage ports. The first thing we'll do is install the CCI software on the host. Then, if it's not already installed, we install the NVMe CLI. The second step is configuring CCI and starting the HORCM instance. You configure CCI by creating a HORCM configuration file. This is a sample HORCM file where the HORCM instance is HORCM6723. After you create the HORCM configuration file, you start the HORCM instance from the command line. The third step is configuring the storage port mode and topology settings. Use the commands displayed on the screen to set and view the port's parameters. Here, you see that for port CL7, C and CL8C, we set the port mode and port topology to NVMe, Fabricon and point to point. Set the port mode to NVMe and verify. Set the port topology and verify. The next step is registering the HBA port. We use RAIDCOM commands to register the HBA port with the associated storage port. Then we can verify the details. Now we're ready to create the NVMe subsystem. First, we identify the existing NVM subsystems on the storage system. Then we create an NVM subsystem with an available ID. We can see the subsystem we created by listing the subsystems again. By default, the host mode is set as Linux and namespace security is enabled. You must register both storage system ports with the NVM subsystem. Then, you can verify the registration. To allow access, we set the host NQN to the NVM subsystem. To get the host NQN details, review the forward slash letc forward slash NVME forward slash host NQN file. Then, use that information to configure the host NQN to allow access to the NVM subsystem. Now, verify the status. Next, register the LDEV as a namespace to the NVM subsystem. We can identify one or more free LDEVs or create new LDEVs. Then, register the LDEVs as namespaces to the NVM subsystem. After registering, we verify that the namespace is assigned with the NVM subsystem. To allow access to the namespace, register the host NQN to the namespace ID in the NVM subsystem. Then, Check the namespace path. The next step is to run NVMe namespace discovery on the host. First, find both storage ports and HBA ports WWNN and WWPN identifiers on the host. Then, run NVMe discovery and NVMe connect to detect the NVMe namespace on the host. Note that you may need to restart the system after this step. Verify that the NVMe namespace is discovered on the host and also verify that the Hitachi storage NVM subsystem is detected as Hitachi SVOSRF system. Next, we'll set up the I.O. policy and enable NVMe native multipathing. First, create a U.Dev rule for the Hitachi VSP 5000 storage system NVM subsystem to enable round-robin load balancing for NVMe native multipathing. Disable Device Mapper Multipathing and enable NVMe Native Multipathing. 
recreate the initramps file and restart the host, so that the I.O. policy and NVMe native multipathing take effective. After the host is up and running, verify the NVMe device status. Then, confirm that the I.O. policy was changed to round robin. The final step is creating a file system on the NVMe namespace. After the file system is created, be sure to mount it. Thank you for watching this video. For more information, visit www.hitachivantara.com and www.knowledge.hitachivantara.com.